failure analysis is a thoughtful review of the product and the environmental facts which help lead you to the most probable root cause of the product. Uh, what we're do trying to do is we try to find the why behind the what. You know, it's kind of like the three W's, you know. Everybody kind of knows what happened. It's got a rod through the side of the block. What we try to do is figure out why it happened and uh, who did it. How do you go about determining the why behind the what? In failure analysis, there's uh, eight steps that we go by when we're determining our failure analysis. And uh, the first step, you know, is uh, more or less, it, it has to come from wherever the component failed, whether it's a mine site, a customer. What they're doing is you've got to state the problem clearly. So that's why we're looking for them. They tell us to rod to the side of the block. From there, what we do is we bring it in here and then we start gathering facts. And facts are anything you can see, hear, smell, taste, that's considered a fact. Uh, when I'm going through my fact gathering mission, it's not only the iron. What I do is I get on the computer, I'll go through oil sample history, I'll go through previous machine histories, you know, try to, if it has BIMS in it, I'll go through BIMS, trying to locate anything that might have stuck out that would have caused this product problem. People bring me the iron, and then what we do is we try to lay it out observe and record it. What we do there is all these pieces probably came over in one box. So I'll split it up into uh, pieces that are iron, aluminum, brass, piston rings, uh, anything that's, that's different. And then from there what I do is I start piecing the stuff together so I can determine what type of fractures there were, uh, the scuffing on the skirts. I mean, kind of put them together, you can see if it's full scuffing on the full thrust base of the skirt or just in four corner scuffing. I mean, that's why you want to kind of put it together. Uh, once we have it all laid out and we're gathering our facts and we're recording them, we're writing them down, uh, we uh, put events to them. Events are uh, dy dynamic, moving, something happened type stuff. And for every fact, there's an event that causes that. It's kind of like uh, the, the deep scratch marks in this liner. I mean, that's a fact. The event that caused that is a wrist pin sliding up and down against the liner wearing on it. So what you can do is you can uh, put events to the facts, and then you put all these events on a timeline from when the product was due, when it started, when it failed, and on down the list. And you can you can explain how this happened, you can explain how the keepers broke, you can explain how the, the liner got broken, scuffing in it. Uh, I mean, you can put it right down in a nice little uh, form there. And then what we have is we have a uh, failure analysis uh, program on the computer that once you come up with your, uh, what you believe, with the facts you have, the most probable root cause, you start there and you can write your failure analysis. And you write your failure analysis right off your uh, timeline. I mean, I use that, that way everything flows together. I mean, one thing happened before the other and you can prove it on this timeline. And I think it adds a lot of credibility to your, your failure instead of just saying the piston skirt broke. Tell them why it broke, how it broke, what it affected, what it caused on these other parts. And, uh, get all done there we got a, a program we can put pictures on there we take pictures of digital pictures we can put them in this uh, failure analysis we can make highlighted spots on them if I want to point out the certain scuffing in a certain area for somebody back at Caterpillar to look at or the customer to look at he can zoom in on that he might should be able to see what I'm looking at and like I said a picture is worth a thousand words so I mean the better the picture is in there and your story, it kind of goes hand in hand. They can look at both of them and read one, and they should understand exactly where I'm coming from. The, the main reason we're doing failure analysis is so we, we can avoid the repeat failures. I mean, if, if, you, if something comes in here and you just fix it as fast as you can, send it back out there, you may or may not have fixed a problem. If you fix the symptom, the symptom may come back to haunt you. You might be doing a repeat failure. 
repeat failures are costly. I mean, it's downtime, it's money. So if we can get to the root cause and prevent it from happening again, I feel really good about it. I mean, you, something else I tell everybody, you have to take your time when you're doing failure analysis. I mean, you gotta be thinking about what you're looking at. I mean, write down stuff. I mean, documentation. That way, if you look at something for a while, make sure you write that stuff down. Go to your next piece and write everything you see off there. Write down all the facts you see off one piece. That way, if you have to do something else in between there, you come back and you have all your facts so you don't have to backtrack. Now, what do you do with the information after you've gathered the failure analysis? Well, all this information is put on our, we have a, a drive on the computer where the failure analysis gets typed in, the pictures gets put in on there, and uh, it's just stored on that. And they can be sent, emailed to whoever wants to look at these things, see them. Uh, I've had failure analysis go all over the country. Do you ever share that information with Caterpillar? Yes, we uh, work with Caterpillar as often as we can, the more people I can get from Caterpillar down there and go through the failures with me is a, is a reward to me, especially if it tells me that I'm on the right line. And uh, we, we get engineers from Caterpillar coming down there and going through failure analysis with us. And uh, you know, they're coming up with the same stuff I am. And like I tell everybody else, if you work off the facts, you should be able to come up with the same root cause. I mean, your events might change a little bit, but the root cause should not. The only thing that would ever change a root cause is if, for some reason, some of the facts were left out. Okay, thank you.